Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Thylaca leonids, also known as the marsupial lions, are a family of carnivorous marsupials native to Australia. The most well-known member of the group by far was the formidable Pliopleistocene genus Thylaca leo, a jaguar-sized predator with distinctive bolt-cutter jaws, piercing incisors, and powerfully muscled forelimbs tipped with sharp hooked claws. However, the family first appears in the fossil record during the late Oligocene at the famous Riversley World Heritage Area in Queensland, and were initially small, squirrel-sized animals that dwelt in rainforest ecosystems. Thylacoleonids were members of the largely herbivorous marsupial clade Diprotodontia, of which living members include possums, kangaroos and relatives, koalas and wombats. These animals are united by a suite of shared anatomical traits, which include the possession of two large, forward-pointing incisors at the tip of the lower jaw, and tiny reduced or absent canines in the upper jaw. Thylacoleonids in particular are close relatives of wombats and koalas within the clade Vombatiforms, with phylogenetic studies concluding that the group diverged from their living relatives during the late Eocene about 35 million years ago. Ancestral Vombatiforms were almost certainly herbivorous, so it is currently uncertain as to why and how carnivory developed in Thylacoleonids. Lack of competition for the niche of arboreal ambush predator may have been a factor, with dasuromorph marsupials and monitor lizards being largely terrestrial during the Oligocene. Regardless, these animals were able to shift their powerful jaws and slicing premolars to new uses in capturing and devouring small prey. The oldest, although interestingly not the most basal member of the group, was the genus Wacaleo. Up to five species have been described and named, with the most ancient being Wacaleo pitacantensis from the late Oligocene Lake Pitacanta site in South Australia, and dated to approximately 25 million years ago. About the size of a house cat, this species would have hunted birds, reptiles, and small mammals in the trees. At this stage, Wacaleo may have been omnivorous in its habits. As a genus, this animal appears to have expanded in size as time went on, as the four species present in Miocene deposits are all larger animals. The species W. Shaltoni from the early Miocene of Riversley was substantially larger, weighing up to 24 kilograms or 53 pounds, and would have preyed on other diprotodontians such as possums and kangaroos. The morphology of the animal's humerus is similar to those of koalas, suggesting decent climbing ability. The largest and last species was W. alcutensis, from the late Miocene Alcuta site in the Northern Territory, being about the size of a leopard. Wacaleo became extinct approximately 10 million years ago, possibly due to climatic changes that led to the disappearance of rainforest ecosystems across a majority of Australia, to be replaced by semi-arid open woodland. Another early genus was recently named Lecanaleo from the late Oligocene and early Miocene of Riversley. A small animal weighing 2.7 kilograms, or about 6 pounds, Lecanaleo lived alongside the larger species of Wacaleo, and clearly inhabited a different predatory niche, being comparable to a small felid or modern tiger quolls. Despite its size, this animal possessed a very powerful bite that would have been useful for preying on possums and the small herbivorous Nimeo koala. An even tinier Thylacoleonid was also present in the same ecosystem during the early Miocene. This was Microleo atumbrae, a grey squirrel sized genus and the most basal member of the entire family. Weighing just 600 grams, or 1.3 pounds, the animal possessed a typical sharp and blade-like premolars typical of the group, indicating a carnivorous diet. At this time, Riversley was covered by wet tropical forests similar to those present in modern Borneo, with Microleo inhabiting the higher reaches of the canopy in contrast to its heavier relatives. Potential prey would have included insects, small lizards, as well as birds and their eggs. By the time of the Miocene-Pliocene transition, all of these more basal forms had become extinct due to the continued aridification of the Australian interior. This left only one genus that was able to survive in these new conditions, Thylacoleo itself. Three species of this powerful predator are known, with the oldest and most basal being T. hilli from Pliocene age deposits of Town Cave in South Australia and dated to approximately 5 million years ago. Unlike its later relatives, this species is represented by very fragmentary remains consisting of a single third premolar from the lower jaw. Thylacoleo hilli was also quite small, weighing just 25 kilograms, 
which overlaps with the earlier Wakaleo alcutaensis in terms of size. It lived alongside Thylacoleo cratidentatus during the Pliocene, which was substantially larger at around 50 kilograms or 110 pounds. This animal would have been a more terrestrial ambush predator, lurking in the undergrowth or on a low-hanging tree branch in order to pounce on wombats, kangaroos and juvenile flightless birds. At the end of the Pliocene, more open environments led to the evolution of larger herbivorous animals, including diprotodon and browsing macropods, such as the short-faced stenurine kangaroos. In response, a more massive species of Thylacoleo evolved to prey on them. This was T. carnifex, the last and most spectacular member of both its genus and family. First scientifically described in the mid-19th century on the basis of remains shipped to Richard Owen in London, the animal was correctly recognised by the famous anatomist as being a ferocious predator, filling in a niche similar to that of big cats elsewhere in the world. The skull was shortened and robust, with prominent stabbing incisors and enormous blade-like carnassial teeth formed from premolars. These teeth worked like a set of shears that were capable of slicing through flesh and crushing the neck vertebrae and windpipe of large prey. The upper canines, while still present, were very short and stubby, playing little role in prey capture. Overall, the body was stocky and heavily built, with powerful muscular forelimbs tipped with sharp, retractable claws, a feature unique among marsupials. The tail was stiff and rather rigid, similar to that of a kangaroo, possibly allowing the animal to rear up and balance on its hind legs. From a position of concealment, Thalakaleo probably leapt out of the undergrowth and grappled with diprotodontids and kangaroos, pinning them down with its semi-opposable thumb-like first digits and biting the throat or the back of the skull. The animal's incredibly powerful jaws would have been effective at quickly killing prey, essential in an environment inhabited by even larger predators, including the massive monitor lizard Varanus priscus and the terrestrial crocodile Quincana. Despite weighing between 100 and 130 kilograms, or 223 to 287 pounds on average, with large male specimens maxing out at 160 kilograms or 356 pounds, T. carnifex would have had to be wary of these reptilian competitors, likely carrying prey up trees in order to eat in peace. Preserved claw marks found at caves in Western Australia indicate that Thylacoleo was an effective climber, able to scale rock faces in order to find a safe place to store their kills and young joeys. These adaptations allowed T. carnifex to spread across Australia during the Pleistocene, eventually encountering the ancestors of modern Australian Aboriginal peoples approximately 60,000 years ago. These first Australians were entering a land unlike anywhere else on Earth, and may have recorded Thylacoleo in the form of rock art, but these depictions show striped animals that may have been thylacines instead. Despite its success, T. carnifex vanishes from the fossil record approximately 35,000 years ago, with the reasons for this still being heavily debated. Human hunting and altering of Australia's landscapes with the use of stick fire farming have been blamed for the extinction of the continent's megafauna. Although Aboriginal peoples had already lived alongside these animals for 25,000 years or so, drastic long term climate change during the Pleistocene may have also been the culprit, or some combination of multiple factors. Regardless, as a non cursorial ambush predator that relied on a variety of large game, Thylacoleo would have been unable to catch smaller and faster moving prey. Sadly, this unique hunter faded from existence with no large Australian mammals rising to fill the ecological void. However, Thylacoleonid should be remembered as a testament to the diversity and adaptability of the continent's animal fauna, and the closest thing in nature to the drop bears of outback cryptozoology. Thanks for watching everyone! The next video will cover another group of Australian carnivorous marsupials, the Thylacinids. So until then, I'll see you again soon. Cheerio!